Okay, morning everybody. Okay, today's lesson will be on the second part of work, energy and power. Okay, we will deal specifically at the first instance will be work done, followed by potential energy, gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay, we will look at how the mathematics work and what are the keywords that we need to write uh, in our answers when we are actually tackling questions. Okay, now for work done. Okay, work done, definitions, there's two components to it. There is the force and there is distance. Okay, and the distance chosen or distance used in this formula has to be in a certain in a condition. And the condition has to be, it must be in the same direction of the force. Some of us, we just loosely state it as the same axis. Okay, the same, the same axis. Okay, which means if the force is in the horizontal axis, the distance will be in the horizontal axis. Okay, so if you take these two distances and you look into it, you can actually have the components for work done, okay, which is F times distance move. In terms of the definitions, okay, sorry, in terms of the answering technique, you look at uh, answering questions in O level, the students for the students to show understanding of for work done, the students need to identify the force and the distance. And primarily, the distance identified has to state the direction of the force to show the marker that he actually knows what are the components of work done. Okay, so this is what we mean by keywords. We will look at the details, the usage, the applications. Okay, at the later part. Okay, work done is energy, so the SI unit will be joules. Okay, one joule will be one newton, one force. With the force times distance will be one newton multiplied by one meter. And of course, this distance will be in the same direction as the force. Okay, what for the same direction as the force. Okay. Now, one example will be like the force is to the right. The distance of the shoulder move will be also be to the right. Okay, so if you look. If you look at F times the, this, the product of these two factors, you will have actually the work done by the mother pushing the shoulder. Okay. Now, there are cases whereby you have force and you, or sometimes you might have even have distance move. But you'll find that there isn't work done at the particular situation because the distance move in context is actually not, uh, not in the same axis. It's actually perpendicular to the forces. Okay, what example we have? Uh, one example that we have is this. Okay, example you're holding the book up, supporting the book. The force you apply is upwards. Okay, but you're actually moving to the right. So this will be the distance move. Okay, the distance. Okay, and you find that the distance and the force move is actually 90 degrees to each other. And because they are not, they are perpendicular, or force and distance, okay, is not in the same axis, not parallel to each other, there will not be any work done. So the work done in this situation will actually be zero, even though there is actually distance covered. Okay. So take note of this, okay. So this is what we mean in this situation. Okay, the distance is not in the same axis as the force. Another example that we have is whereby the object actually doesn't move. Okay, you apply a force, but the object doesn't move. Okay, so you have what we call F times distance with zero, and you have the work done to be zero. Okay, so that's what we mean by work. No work is being done, even though force is exerted, but distance is either moving in the wrong direction, or actually the distance clock is actually zero. Okay, so one example of a good work done. Okay. Uh, correct application of work is actually you push the boy pushes the box okay in the direction as shown and the distance is actually two meter okay one thing to check is that this is distance and for for the boy to actually do work okay you must make sure or we have to check that the distance is actually in the same axis with the force okay same distance or same axis same direction usually we just one simple rule will be just looking at whether these two are parallel to each other. Okay, the distance and the distance move and the force applied, whether the direction is actually parallel to each other. If there is, then you actually have work done. And I can actually calculate using the formula. 
which is 5 times 2, which is 10 joules. Okay, so it's, I, I believe it's quite simple enough, but remember the condition for work done is the distance and the force must be in the same direction. The other one that we're looking at is the other form of energy, kinetic energy. And so kinetic energy, what we call the energy due to motion. Like I mentioned before in the first video, the kinetic energy, one of the keywords when we use kinetic energy, students need to identify or illustrate the velocity, the change in speed of the object. Okay, so that's why in the formula you will find that the formula actually includes the velocity. Okay, so the formula will be e square equal uh, e kinetic energy equal half mv square. Okay, now take note to use this formula to get energy in SI unit. One of the common things that students must make sure is that the component must be in SI unit, which means the mass must be in kg. The speed must be in meter per second. Okay, so if it is gram, okay, you need to make effort to convert it to kg. Okay, if it's km per hour, okay, just take note you need to convert it to meter per second first before you substitute the fact variables into the formula. Okay, so this is one of the important mistakes that we always make in the situation. Okay, now example. Okay, oops, there's a half here, sorry. Okay, for example, an object 50 gram, okay, moving at a certain speed 2 meter per second, okay, find to determine its kinetic energy. Okay, one of the things that you, we always encourage students to do is to check the units given. Okay, for mass, SI unit must be in kg, so which means the toy car mass has to be converted. So the student need to convert 50 gram to kg first, which is what I have done so. Okay, before you use the formula, huh? so this is one example. Okay, so you see, there's a kg now. Okay, F from gram, I actually convert it to kg first. Speed, make sure it's two meter per second. Okay, after that you have your v square inside. Okay, substitute the two factor or two variable inside the formulas, and your calculator will give you the correct answer. Okay, take note, final answer in physics is always two or three sf. So whichever is convenient for you. Okay, two or three, yeah. Uh, not one, not fraction, okay, not more than three SF. Okay. So like I mentioned before, okay, remember the conversion of SI units. Okay. GPE or EP potential gravitational potential energy. The energy that the body gains due to its relative relative position. Okay, aka the vertical height, the position from the ground. Sometimes you call this vertical height. Okay, the vertical height. Okay, so another word for potential energy due to the height is actually work done. Okay, work done. Okay, to lift the object up. Okay, the formula is actually quite similar. Okay, for example, in this case, okay, the work done, the force you are looking at is actually upwards. Okay, distance move is h. Okay, so from the object that we have to lift the object from ground level to the certain distance h above the ground okay the force that we are looking at is actually upwards distance move is upwards these two are in the same direction so you actually have positive work done for the object so the work done formula force times distance will be this way okay and since it is at constant speed okay aka acceleration is zero by newton law f net okay equal to ma and you'll find that since a is zero f net will be zero and the forces the component will be force applied minus weight okay basic newton's law okay on chapter three dynamics okay if you are still not sure about newton's law okay refer to the video on chapter three dynamics okay i have a video on newton's law okay it is important to know how to get how to use newton's law effectively okay so once you have this Okay, rearrange the formula, you have for work, uh, force applied equal to the weight. So the force is actually what we call weight in this case. And weight is mg, okay, which is chapter 4 of your physics topic. So once you have it, okay, so what we do, we will resubstitute the formula back into and uh, resubstitute the equation back into the formula. Okay, so you substitute weight for weight as the force mg back into the equations and the whole equation will look like this 
okay, which is what we call work done, uh, work done by the object due to the Earth, and that form energy is what we call gravitational potential energy. Okay, the formula that we are looking out for is the same criteria. The all the variables that you use has to be in SI units. Okay, before the potential energy can be calculated in these own SI unit joules. Okay, so mass of the body has to be in kg. Vertical height, remember, it always always must be in meter. Okay, vertical height. Huh? Okay, gravitational field strength. Newton per kg is a standard unit that we always use. On Earth, it actually is 10 Newton per kg. Okay, 10 Newton per kg. Okay, but the setting that we have, okay, for the keywords that we used, like I mentioned previously, okay, gravitational potential energy. Okay, one of the keywords to that student must write to illustrate their understanding is the student need to mention vertical height. Okay, you need to mention vertical height, the vertical height, the correct vertical height in his explanation. Okay, so that's how markers actually justify or understand that the students know how to apply gravitational potential energy. Okay, example will be quite uh, simple. Okay, same thing. Weight is in k kg. Okay, height is ten meter. Okay, once you substitute the variable inside. Okay, you'll find that you have the answer straight away. The common things that we look at is we like to combine the energy together using conservation of energy, whereby energy gain is actually equal to energy loss. Or sometimes we have is initial energy is equal to the final energy. So I have the equation here, so whereby I can have one side, I work out the potential energy, okay, and the final energy is actually converted to kinetic energy, which I have the formula half mv squared. So now, now you have the two equations side by side. You can actually solve for the justified uh, for the related uh, re related unknown. Okay, so you can just work out on the algebra and okay, solve for the respective unknowns. Okay, this is how we use kinetic energy, potential energy, and work done equation in our mathematics. Okay, the main key linkage between all these formulas is what we call the conservation of energy to link all these together. Okay, same thing. Take a look. In non-ideal case, the in initial energy, okay, and the final energy, including the work loss, okay, final energy here refer to the useful one plus the energy loss. So this is what we call the energy conservation. Initial energy is converted from one form to another form. The energy neither destroyed nor de or created. They are always remain the same, okay. Just that they are at different form now. Okay, then after that, rearrange the formulas equations and you will find that the answer will appear. Okay, and same thing the formula, okay, conservation of energy, okay, plus the basic formulas and you'll be able to solve the equation. Okay. Take note in physics, in terms of calculation here, we are not looking at just like one formula. You apply a formula and you get the answer straight away. Sometimes it involves manipulations of several formula. Okay, so just take note of this. Okay, and sometimes the formula actually include maybe your previous topic kinematics or even dynamics. Okay, for in this case question here, we have a application of kinematics first, followed by conservation of energy, whereby the object is accelerated from rest to 30 meter per second in a short timing of 10 second. Okay, and these two components will actually give rise to what we call your speed time graph. And with speed time graph, we look at two important branches of application, we look at the gradient which give us the acceleration, the gradient okay, which give us the acceleration and we look at the area under the graph which give us the distance okay. and how we look at it, and we look at the graph and we actually determine the distance moved by the car okay, by a simple of area under the graph so this segment here is an application of your chapter 2 kinematics okay. Once you have the distance, okay, you look at the relevant forces. Okay, you use the relevant force, okay, the force on the engine, okay, 10 kN, take note of the prefix, okay, and you actually have the energy use, okay, or energy, the work done by the car. And a simple conservation of energy will give rise to the answer for kinetic energy. Okay, this is a simple principle of conservation of energy. Okay. And after that, this will bring us to the next topic which we will continue in the next uh, video. 
Okay, so take note, conservation of energy okay, is really important in our syllabus.